Sunday Adelaide here. Alon Adebayo, welcome. Adedamola, nice to see you. Good morning, everyone. Mufelola, good morning. Nkiri Ojibadu, Charles Smith, Kennedy Festus, Eric Osad Dolo, Noel Oshuku, Opushuku, Opushuku, Ola Martin, Kemi Adebayo, Lyo Charles Emmanuel, Shike Eddy, Fumi Jeboda, Gift Okode, Daniel Asenga, Grace Mangimela, She Sandra, Bosefaya Jola, Welcome everyone, Kazik Ahmed, Olufumilayo Dina, Terry Queen, hi, good morning. Prince Mazibuko, welcome everyone. Mary uh, Aligweke, Ali Aligwekwe, Adeleke Adeneyi, Demidenka Yuri, T.Y. Moore, Stella Nuhu, Sam Agbe, Agwede, Rochelle White, Gemel Smith, Josephine Onabo, Anastasia McDonald, Ola Inkashion, Karen. Anyway, here we are, everybody. Nice to have you, nice to see you. Let's do what we normally do. Let's go look for our share button this morning. I'm sure you, uh, you know where your share button is by now. Look under your video, under this video, you'll be able to see a button there that tells you how to share. Just press that button, it will automatically come to your, to your page and, um, you know, then you'll be able to go from there, you'll be able to have a copy. That is how you get a copy, you need to press that and it will automatically come to your page, you have a copy, so you'll be able to watch this program over and over again um, and uh, while you are sharing it, it gives you the opportunity to comment. You could write your comment as well. You might want to write some comments of what you've been thinking about this, uh, uh, about this, our time with together and uh, what the teaching and the platform has been giving you. So if you share your experience of what you've been receiving on this platform, it might be able to be a blessing to uh, many other people who will be seeing this, uh, these videos on your timeline. And also, thanks to those who have been doing the promotion. If you have been try, if you have been um, uh, sharing the links or, or to the program to the platform, kudos to you. But whenever you share or whenever you, uh, whenever you invite people, either you do your own video or whenever you invite people to come to the platform, either by an article or video, uh, yeah, it might be a good thing for you to do what we agree to do. Put a uh, ash, put an hashtag, hashtag Pastor Sunday Life. If you put hashtag Pastor Sunday Life, what that does is that everything that we put under that hashtag comes on the news, uh, news line. So everybody will be able to see, uh, you know, anybody that is following, everybody will be able to see what you put there. So it's good for you, for people to be able to read or uh, watch what you put. Uh, you need to put that hashtag Pastor Sunday Life. Okay. All right, here we are. We are start, starting another series this week. A new series this week. Oh Lord, we pray for your blessing. We ask for your grace, for your anointing, for your visitation, for your unction, for your unction, the unction of the Holy Spirit. 
let it be released this morning. In Jesus' name. I don't know if that's a great. So, um, anyway, this series this week is going to be called Why Love Turns to Hate. Why Love Turns to Hate. Why Love Turns to Hate. That is interesting. Why love turns to hate. I'm sure you've heard of that before, isn't it? Everybody, uh, we, we've all had a story or the other when love turns to hate. And I'm sure maybe that's happened to you before when you love somebody so much and it turns to hate. You know, I have not really experienced that before that somebody that I loved before would turn to hate. I think maybe I should have, but I have not. I, I th and I think the reason why I have not experienced that is because of the decision that I've taken for myself personally, that I will never hate. I will never hate anybody, no matter what the person has done against me, and no matter how bad they have hurt me, I will still not hate them. The most I, would, I could do is just to limit my, my conversations with them or my interactions with them or to just put a gap, uh, but I will still love them, and I will still respect them, honor them, because, you know, we really don't have any option but to love. Uh, we are all supposed to love no matter what people do against us, and no matter how badly we've been hurt or injured, uh, we, there is no excuse for hate. There is no excuse for hate. But we are living in a real world, and in the real world, things happen. In the real world, things happen. And one of the things that happen in life is that love sometimes turns to hate. Love sometimes will often turns to hate. Now, let me re relate with you first before I go ahead. What will you say about that idea? That what will you say about this topic? What will you say about this suggestion in the first place? Is it a realistic... <clears throat> Yeah, topic? Is it a real thing? Is it? Uh, is that really for real? Is it true that um, love will always will often turn to hate? And does it happen? I know it happens, but I want to hear your own opinion and I want to see what you all think about that. Is it something that you have come across before? Is it something that uh, maybe you have experienced? Uh, is it a Topic worth, worth discussing? Is it a topic worth discussing? Is it something worth deliberating on? Is it something that you would like to hear? Is it something that you would like to understand why that happened? What, is it something that you would like to understand? Would you really like to know why that happens? And um, how it happens, why it happens? And yeah, are you really interested in such a topic as this? Why love turns to hate? Why love turns to hate? So hate, hate. So let me see what you say about that. But while you are writing your opinion and your feelings on that, let me tell you, give you an idea. I have so many topics. Like, it's always a dilemma for me to know what topic to come up here, out here with for you. For you. And, um, you know, I always have many options. Too many options, really. Um, you know, but... This topic is uh, is an everyday kind of topic. It's an everyday kind of topic that people experience, and especially in marriage. I mean, even the fact that people who have been who, who have been married would divorce that talks about hatred right there. I mean, how can you how can you describe a situation whereby someone that you are so badly in love with a few years ago? And you are telling her you are ready to die for her. And maybe she was telling you she was ready to die for you. And now the next thing you discover is that you are all hating each other. And you are all running apart. And, uh, you know, all, all over the place. And, but that doesn't really mean hate all the time. But in some cases, it is hatred that leads to that. And, um, you know, I would like to say thank you to T.Y. Because I was watching... Uh, so I'm going to share this, where I got to know what particular topic 
I should talk about. And it's just by watching our video that got me to know uh, that this is the topic I wanted to address this week. Because she was talking about, uh, I think she was talking about the situation with her husband, how she got married. I don't remember how she called that video. She she had a top, she had she had a title for it, but she but she met this man, you know, that they had just swept her off her feet, and a, a man that uh, she fell in love with greatly, and you know she was describing how great the guy was, and and that was so nice. I was so surprised because many women they don't want to talk about their exes, and when they talk about them, they only talk about them in a negative light. But here I was listening to a lady talking about this man. I mean, as if she was, I was, she, she was still in love with him, and uh, and <laughs> without him, it was only when you keep on listening to her that you discover that they were actually divorced, and uh, she'd been divorced from him before, and the man was even not alive anymore. I mean, the man is even not alive anymore. The man is gone, and uh, so. And but she, but and and then when you keep on listening to her, you discover that the man actually hurt her badly, hurt her, and you know did very unbelievable things to her. But still, <laughs> uh, I couldn't believe it that you know this lady was talking about him with so much love, with so much warmth, with so much passion, and that was very impressive. And I, I and I was thinking, wow, so. She and, and she also described the anger and the um, the divorce and the horrible things that the man did to her. So so she was real. She she is a real person. She was talking about. So I could tell that she's not bitter. I could tell that she's not unforgiving. I could tell that even though they were divorced and they had a very bad experience and the, you know she experienced very bad pain. But still, she was magnanimous to, I mean, to her and, uh, you know, to him, very kind. So, and, and, and then I heard, I saw some comments under that. And the comment that made me to really, to, that challenged me to really talk about this topic was uh, a lot of ladies, when they were hearing what the guy did to T.Y., even though T.Y. herself was not negative and she was not aggressive and she was not saying any bad thing, uh, to, about the man, and she was just telling the story as it happened. But some people were commenting; <laughs> they were saying, "Man, wow, what a horrible guy! What a what the kind of guy is that? You know, how can men be? You know, so they started going against men, and the men are so men are so like this, men are like that, guys are like this, <laughs> and so I just know that that is just because of lack of understanding." A lot of people don't understand why men behave like that or why things happen in life or why love turns to hate. <laughs> and, uh, okay, you know, and you, you know what? And also, I, I had listened to an interview here in Ukraine when a, a Russian TV program or a Ukrainian TV program was going about the street and asking ladies, women, uh, about their experiences with men. And all the 99% of the women that were spoken to all came to the conclusion uh, that men are dogs. <laughs> that men are dogs and men should never be respected. That all men are dogs. And uh, men are just like, you know, they, dogs are more worse, worse, worse descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 I discovered that well ladies and maybe men also don't know uh, why love turns to hate and also another program that I saw which also broke my heart was you know that they were asking men about women they were asking men about women and uh and men also think that all women are prostitutes. That all women are prostitutes. That women are just sheep. Women are just sellouts. Women are just prostitutes. All women. 
I think it's not fair as well. I think that is not fair as well. So both men and women are thinking negative about themselves, and I understand why. It's because of lack of understanding. People do not understand each other. And you know, and the reason why these people are saying all that is because they have they had one experience or the other. So the men are thinking women uh, are sheep and they are bad. And the women are thinking men are bad and they are wicked, you know, because of their experiences. So, but their experiences are real. So we cannot say, you know, it's not true that women are like this. And we cannot say it's not true that men are like this. And we cannot say that their experiences are not true. These people experience these things. Some of them experience betrayals. Some of them experience uh, disappointments. Some of them experience heartbreak. Some of them experience the... You know, all kind of things, things, you know, all kind of things will happen to people in life. And, and so people come to their own conclusions. But, you know, when we come from a place of understanding, uh, when we come from a place of understanding, things become better. So I want us to understand what is really going on. And that this would not just happen between men and women, but this could happen between anybody, between fathers and, 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 and sons, or between mothers and daughters, between children and parents, between parents and children, between husband and wife, between siblings, brothers and sisters. The love could always turn to hatred. And this not just in terms of family, no, husband and wife only, but love could turn to hatred even in church, even in the workplace, even in other places of life. By the way, I'm saying that they're congratulating somebody here. Gift, okay. Today is Gift's birthday. All right, wow. Sister Gift, in the name of Jesus, we hug you today. We embrace you with the love of God. We just reach out to you and love on you today and release the blessings and the grace of God upon you in the name of Jesus. And we pray that uh, this your new discovery, this new revelation that God has blessed you with on this platform, that it will lift you up to a new height and that even this new experience that we're uh, going into this week and with this new series, that, you know, that it will be a, a, a new day, a new experience in your life, and there will be a new stage and a new series in your life as well. A new series of grace, a new series of love, a new series of understanding, a new series of blessing, a new series of uh, God's uh, multiplication in your life. So we release the grace of God, the blessings of God, and the gift of the Father upon you on this your birthday. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, here we go. Why love turns to hate? Why love turns to hate? Now, I don't, I think, I, I, I can't, I don't really think I've seen a lot of your answers about my question, the question that I asked in terms of uh, if this topic is a topic you are, you are interested in listening to. I think the birthday greetings have taken over that. <laughs> anyway, I would just assume that it's a topic that we are all interested in. So uh, I will just go ahead and do what I need to do. Well, here we go. So why does love turn to hate? Why does love turn to hate? Why does love turn to hate? Uh, the f f first thing we must know is that that is a reality. It is a reality that love does turn to hate. Uh, lo love love, turns to hate and there is nothing we can do about it it, it happens it, it, it's happening and, uh, and uh, maybe some people are experiencing it right now maybe there are some people who are experiencing that right now but you know when that happens the first thing you must know is that don't play the blame game stop blaming people stop blaming other people stop condemning people stop judging people and stop saying somebody has been responsible for whatsoever that has happened in your relationship. If you are going to be fo fo focusing on the if she is to blame or he is to blame, is you only you make things worse for yourself. Uh, so when love turns to hate, you know it's a matter of principles. It's a law that is in operation. It is a law that is that is uh, uh, that is. It is a matter of law and principle that has come into force. It's not about the individual. And when love turns to hate, that could happen to anybody. It could be with anyone. It could be with
with me, it could be with you, it could be with anyone. Uh, it is just because that will always be the natural, mm, natural consequences or natural, uh, natural repercussion or nemesis of breaking a law or the other. So it is when we break a law or the, one law or some laws that you know that operate in that sphere. That is why where that and why that happens. So it's not about individuals. You know, sometimes we look at people who have experienced love turning to hate, and we look at them and think, "Wow, she was not she was not lucky." <laughs> uh, she was not lucky, or he was not lucky. The guy was bad. Oh, the guy was bad. Oh, the guy was bad. Oh, the the boy, the the girl was bad. You know, I would not like to approach this from that side. I would not like to approach this from the side of who is bad or who is not bad. You know, yeah, there are some people who are bad, but don't let us define things that happen in life in terms of people are bad or people are... All of us are good, and all of us have some ugly part of us that we don't, <laughs> we don't want to go into and we don't want to touch on. Everybody have both the good and the bad side. So the fact that anybody could be bad, <laughs> you know, that that is just that is just the reality. Um, and if you are talking about somebody who is bad, uh, you don't know what you you will become. You don't know what you will do if you happen to fall in the same situation that the person finds himself. So if you happen to uh, fall in the same problem or fall into the same situation, the exact same situation, maybe you would have behaved even worse than that person that you were thinking is bad. So I don't want to approach this topic from the side of there are some bad guys out there. No, that's not the way I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this from, from the objective reality of laws and principles. That these things happen when laws and principles are violated. And the reason I'm addressing it is not for you to be able to look at somebody and say, okay, I was not lucky, she was bad, or he was bad. No, it's just for you to be able to know the, what leads to these kind of things and what laws are violated for these things to happen and what are the things that we should do or we should not do to avoid these kind of consequences. Uh, <laughs> So, so I just want you to, mm, to, 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 you know, listen to this message open-heartedly, to open your heart as we go through this teaching this week. All right, so why does love, I'm sure you've been waiting, so why does love turn to hate? <laughs> why will love turn to hate? Why does love turn to hate? Okay, tell us, why does it happen, right? <laughs> Why does love turn to hate? Well, number one, there is a saying in, uh, in Russian language that says, Otluvi donenaviste adinshak. I've never heard anything like that in English. I've never heard anything like that in English. Otluvi donenaviste adinshak. Maybe it's there in English. I will try to it, it, translate or interpret this to you, and you you tell me if there is a if there is, if there is a corresponding or a parallel uh, term or statement in English. What that means is that from love to hate is only one step. From love to hate is just one step. So you could be loving today and step in the right or wrong direction. You could begin to hate, could lead to hate. So what, what it means is that <laughs> from between love and hate, or from hate, I mean from love to hate, from love, this is love to hate, it's just one step, one wrong step. Well, wrong, one step in the wrong direction will turn, will turn love to hate. And... Uh, or maybe it happens the opposite as well. Maybe it happens the other side, from hate to love. Maybe <laughs> one step between love to hate. But they say from love to hate, just one step. Uh, is there anything like that in English? I don't know if you if you all know if you all know any any phrase like that. I don't know. 
Ah, okay. The English version is there is a thin line between love and hate. Okay. A thin line, a thin line between love and hate. Okay. That's what it is in English. So so well, let's let's see that. I think that is that's what we are dealing with here. The thin line, the thin line between love and hate. The thin line between love and hate. It's true. Just a thin line. Why is it a thin line? It's a thin line because love, in most of the cases, has to do with emotions and feelings. Love, in most of the cases, is mostly often have to do with emotions and feelings. And anything that has to do with emotions and feelings could be manipulated, unfortunately. Anything that has to do with emotions and feeling could be manipulated. So if love also is coming from emotions and feelings, it means that the feeling you are having now could, be the, could change to the very opposite feeling if wrong steps are taken or if wrong indications are given. So what do I mean that feelings and emotions can be manipulated? What that means is this. If love is, in, is mainly in the space of feelings and emotions, we know that that means love and uh, love or feelings and emotions are in the sphere of influence of instinct and stimulations which means love could be stimulated or mm, yeah you know we have stimulus, we have reflexes, and we have uh, instincts. So let not even say, even though love is under the is under the force under the influence of instincts, but it's more under the influence of stimulus. Now, stimulus not in the case in the terms of what we drink, I mean what we tablets or something like that. But I'm talking of stimulus in the sense that if you are stimulated, you respond. And why do you respond to stimulation? You respond to stimulus because you are, you know, you know, you you are wired in such a way that you are you are an emotional being. You are you have feelings. So if I beat you, even if you don't want to, you react. That is natural. That is stimulus. You are stimulated. The stimul. So, you know, you are stimulated. You are, you, you know, maybe, but just like if I beat you and you, you respond, the same thing could happen if I love you. So you could be stimulated if mm, I behave to you in a certain way. For example, if I shake your hand now and I don't immediately release your hand and I hold on to it, that is stimulation. You get the message that it means I have more interest in you than the ordinary. Or if I look at you and I don't immediately remove my eyes and I keep on looking in your eyes and, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, looking right into your hand and with interest and smiling, that is stimulation. That is passing a message to you, to your subconscious man, that this man is interested in me. So that is a message right there. So which means uh, that um, you are going to react. It's just like saying when somebody smiles at you, you would like to smile back. Why do you want to smile back? Because we are all emotional beings. We are all having feelings. We have feelings and emotions. And because of your feelings and emotions, so... All, all these things are on the in the sphere of influence of reflexes or um, instincts. 
So you are reflecting what is directed to you. And love is in that category. I'm sorry. Even though we have a higher level of love, which is, um, which is love of love that is based on decision, on decision. But not too many people love by decision. Let me tell you the truth. Not too many people love just because they decide to love. Most people love because they like what they say. They like what they have. Most people love because they feel they, 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 they have a feeling for the person. When, what do we say when we, when, we, when we are in love? And we say we have a feeling for that person. I, have a, I think I have a feeling for that person. Why? Feeling is feeling. And what is feeling? Feeling is instinct. Feeling is reflexes. So why do I have a feeling for that person? It's not because you decided to have a feeling for that person. It's because, you know, you are reflecting some, something that has been programmed to you or something that has been directed towards you. So uh, love is in the, under the influence of, uh, you know, of uh, stimulus, of reflexes and instincts. And all those things have to do with our body and with our soul. So that is why, I mean, the kind of love that we humans experience, apart from the agape love for God and for, you know, you know that kind of love, you know, most of the love that we talk about, emotion, they're mainly emotional feeling, and they're all mainly in the sphere of our body and soul. And that explains why Jesus said there will be no marriage in heaven. <laughs> because there is no manipulation in heaven. <laughs> Nobody will be able to stimulate, manipulate and, uh, and your reflexes or your instinct or your, your, you know, yeah, your stimulus or, you know, your, your, yeah, your response. You know, you know, that would not be necessary in heaven because they are in heaven uh, you have absolute love. Absolute love. There is no need for any stimulus. You don't need to be stimulated to love there. You don't need to be... <laughs> oh, you don't need to be manipulated. You don't need to be programmed to love there. Nobody needs to be kind to you so that you be kind to them back. You know, that is one of the... You know, so that, that, that explains a little bit why uh, love could uh, normally turn to hate. Okay, for example... Uh, if somebody begins to love on you and speak to you and talk t talk to you the right words and really loves you and you know how he loves you and and then the next week or the next day he begins to tell you how ugly you are how horrible you are that's just the one step the thin line between love and hatred so it's stimulated the same person who was telling you I love you and I care for you you are the best in the world nobody like you opens you up <laughs> the same person and you love that person right because you have been manipulated that's what happens with love love could be manipulated why because it is not purely in the spirit level love is in the real life level love is on earth love is in the domain is under the control of the flesh and the soul and what those things that are under the uh, domain of uh, of flesh, especially of emotions and feelings, they could be easily manipulated. That is why that statement, there is a thin, thin, thin line, only a thin line between, between uh, love and hate because it could be manipulated. So just the same way somebody comes to a lady and says, you are the best, you are the most beautiful, and you are the, there is no one like you, I love you, you are this, you are that. That lady opens up. She didn't think of him just before then. She didn't think of him a day before or even one minute before then. But after he started saying all that, he is stimulating, stimulating our feelings, our emotions, and is opening her up. So she's going to open herself up and say, oh, he loves me. But if that same person comes tomorrow and say, you look terrible, you are so ugly, I don't love you, that lady is going to respond just the same way she responded with so much love and openness and appreciation and gratitude. 
the same lady is going to respond to him by saying, I'm ugly, I don't, I don't look nice, and she's going to, well, get out of here, I, I hate you too. She's going to respond with the same hatred. Why? Because, <laughs> because it's all about emotions. It's all about emotions. And the love that we speak about, when, about among men and women and the love that we mostly speak about in our human relations is normally love that is emotional, that is feeling-based, that is emotion-based, and so it could be easily manipulated because emotions could be programmed, emotions could be calculated, uh, feelings could be programmed, and it is because they are all under the power of stimulation. So stimulation, it depends on what stimulation you have been given. You could be given stimulation of kindness, stimulation of attention, stimulation of love, stimulation of care, which opens you up. Or you could be given stimulation of hunger, Stimulation of hatred, stimulation of aggression, stimulation which had hardens you and which makes you, you know, <laughs> to be to, to be aggressive and to be angry. <laughs> so it is not that people change because we have a tendency of thinking that anything that any stimulation that is addressed toward me is sincere. All of us always think that if the person tells me he loves me, that that is the way it is. And that's why we talk about belief and the, and the, or any uh, kind of, uh, you know, reflex that I, uh, reflection, anything that is reflected at me, I reflect back or I reflex back. And that means I think that, oh, okay, because if somebody is smiling at me, it's only natural for me to smile back at that person. It's a reflex thing. It's not a, it's not, it's just something that comes naturally. But let me tell you another love. Another love that is not under the influence of, of uh, reflex and stimulus. The, the love that is not dominated by feelings and emotions. Let me, let me say, if a son comes to the mother and tells the mother, mother, I don't like you, I don't love you, you are wicked, you are this, you are that. Do you think it is easy for that mother to easily, you know, just throw him out and hate him? Let's say he's a drunkard. Let's say he's a, he's a, he's, he's a drug addict. Do you know how much pain the drug addicts and alcoholics and just wayward children do you know how much pain they bring to their parents and to their mothers? To, to the fathers, I don't know. Fathers, <laughs> fathers, fathers, fathers could give up easily. But what I, from my own experience, what I've come to discover is that the mother's love, the love of a mother is not easily provoked. Because that love from a mother is superior to the love that we are talking about among each other. The love of a mother is of, on a higher level. The love of a mother is more decision-based. The love of a mother is more spirit-based. That love is connected to a spirit man. I mean, I know uh, a woman, and this is very sad. I know a woman that the son will abuse her, you know, chase her out from the house, close the door at her, and because the, the son was told by somebody, somebody told the son that the man, the woman is a witch, that she wants to kill the children, and that she is the reason why the children are not successful. And so this guy believes that it is the, the mother that is responsible for all his life's failures. And people, African people tell me this all the time. And, I, and this guy is a, is a Christian. He's even a pastor. And I told him, do you believe that your mother will do that? A mother, you don't know what mother means. You don't know what it means to be a mother. But so many people believe that their mothers are responsible for their failure or for the evil that is happening to them. 
And I told this guy, I said, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't even want to know you. I don't even want you to come to my house anymore. If you are going to be t saying that your mother, you are chasing your mother house, you are, and she, why is doing that? You know what this mother is doing? This mother is going to the church morning to night, praying for him, praying and fasting. This mother sending money to him. This mother is begging him, please talk to me. I'm dying. Please talk to me. Please talk to me, my son. I love you. She's fasting seven days. She's fasting 21 days. She's fasting. And she is saying, don't pray for me. Don't fast for me. Those your fasting and prayers are the things that are making me to even experience more failures and things like that. Because those are the things the prophets have told him. But, and also in our church here, I have so many former drug addicts and former alcoholics. Do you know, these former alcoholics and drug addicts, they have done horrible things to their parents. Some of them have stolen everything from their home. Some of them have stolen all the money of their parents. Some of them have beaten their parents. And this same mother that had been beaten and things have been stolen from her, they have stolen and sold all her things. And still, when they put the man in prison, she will be the one to go and ask that they release him. She will be the one to go to give, bring food to the, to the guy in the prison. She will be the one to do... Nobody will be... I mean, the wives have left, the other people have left, but she will be the one to be keep taking care of him. This same man that was beating him. So what, what does that mean? It tells us something, that the love of a mother, the love of parents, of, of a mother, is much more higher than emotions and feelings. But what we call love, what we call love, is mainly stimulation, emotion, instincts, reflexes. But when it comes to the mother, yes, even though a mother also will be happy when a son comes and, you know, she, he, he, and he treats her nice and she is happy. But even if the son treats her bad, her love is so genuine that it will still give him a benefit of a, of a doubt. It will still, she will still give him the benefit of a doubt and say, no, my son is still, a, is still good anyway. No, maybe something just happened. Oh, something is wrong with my son. No, I'm going to, she's still going to be fighting for you. But if you do that to your wife or to your partner <laughs> or to your friend, they will, just, they will just go off on you and women could be, uh, sometimes if she has, she's really very bitter, she could be, she could, you know, she could, she, she, she could, <laughs> she could, you know, she could be villain. She could, she could come after you very bad. And uh, so, so, but because these are all things that are emotions. So you right there understand one of the main reasons why love will turn to it. Love turns to it in response to the particular behavior that is directed at that person. Love turns to hate because what we call love, most of the time, is just, a, is just a, ref, a reflex and stimulus. Just a reflex and stimulus. So when I'm loved, when I'm loved, I love back. When I'm hated, I hate back. When somebody smiles at me, I smile back. When somebody is angry at me, I'm angry as well. So that is one. But this is just the introduction, you know. This is just the first, first class. In the evening, I'm going to go deeper to why love turns to hate. But, you know, you know it is possible that, that somebody is saying, but, okay, I'm saying... No, but I, I'm justified because people are thinking they are justified why they hate. Because he behaved to me like this. Because he did this to me. So they are thinking that is justifiable. 
There is a reason for my hate. There is a reason for my aggression. There is a reason for why I, I don't like him. Because he treated me like this, or she treated me like this, or he did this. Uh, but in the real sense, the kind of love that God wants us to have is totally the opposite. God wants our love to be the love that is based not on emotions, not on feelings, not so that if it's not based on emotion and feelings, then it cannot be subdued or manipulated by reflex or by stimulus or by instinct. That is why Jesus came with a superior love. So what is the love that Jesus brought? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 46, it says, For if you love those who love you, that is, you see, you see, still reflex there. I love you, you reflex back and love me back. I smile at you, you reflect back and smile at me. I, I hold on to you, I hug you, and I look into your eyes intense, intensely or intently, and you feel it that, oh, he oh, loves me. And you love me back. You look in my eyes, I kiss you, you look back and kiss me as well. What is that? You are only reflecting. reflecting. It's just a product of a reflex. So you are only reflecting what is being at, uh, directed at you. So is that really love? That's what Jesus said. No, that's not love yet. It could stimulate love. It could lead to love, but that's not love yet. That's just reflex. Now, then the same thing. Oh, I'm not more seeing their comments. Uh, yeah. The same thing. Uh, Smartphone, right? the, the, uh, the, the same thing happens when, uh, how do you say it? When, okay, let me see if I'll be able to see your comments from here. So Jesus said, if you love those people who love you, it means you are playing the game of reflex. You are playing the game of stimulus. Because if you love the person that loves you, that means the person loves you. It means the person is stimulating you by that love. And you are loving the person back. So it is not about real love. It's about stimulus. It's about stimulation. So you are stimulated by that love. That, but by that person's love, the person that, that loves you, it just stimulated you and you responded. That is what happened. So you responded to his stimulation. So it's just what Jesus said. Don't let love be based on stimulation. Don't let love be based on emotions. Don't let love just be limited by stimulation or reflexes. It, 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 your love should not be based on how people behave to you or reflected to you or what people program you to do. So if your love is only emotional love or feeling love, then it's going to be under the power of reflex or of stimulus. So, so Jesus said, if you love those who love you, then that is not love. That's not the kind of love that I brought. I brought. So, and, and, and it's amazing what, what, when, when, you, when you understand Jesus. So let's see again what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, so if you love those who love you, that is stimulus. That is, you know, that is reflex. So it could be manipulated. It could be stopped. It could be, you know, it could easily turn to the opposite. It could easily turn to hate. Why? Because the person who loved you showed you love and you responded by love. But what about if he shows you hate? What about if he shows you anger? What about if he begins to reflect uh, do some different feelings towards you? What about if it begins to direct towards you different stimulation? What about if it begins to re de behave to you in an opposite way? Will you still love that person? No, you won't. Because the love you had already was based on his stimulation and on his reflex. So which means now, if he begins to reflect anger or, you know, hatred towards you or abuse towards you, you are going to respond with the same kind of reaction. So that's why I said, if you love those who love you, what reward? What reward have you? What reward have you? 
You don't have any reward. Do, so he said, don't love people because they love you. Don't love by reflex. That's what Jesus is trying to say. Don't love by stimulus. Don't let your level of love be on the level of instinct. Don't let your level of love be on the level of animalistic. This is animalistic kind of response. This is animalistic kind of reaction. Evil animals love like this. That is animal level of love. Animal level of love is reflex, stimulation, emotions, and feelings. That's what animals do. But humans and people who are conscious minds, conscious humans, real humans, they love differently. Real humans are basing their love on understanding or on principles that they know. So therefore, if you come to slap me, I don't have to hate you back. Or slap you back. Why? Because my, my actions are not based on reflexes. My actions are not based on stimulations. So if you hit me like this, I could hang and anchor myself on principles. On understanding. And on the light that I already have. So my light understanding that Love your enemies. You are provoking me. You know what? I love you still. I don't care. Why? My actions are not based on stimulation. You are stimulating me. You are provoking me. You are you try, uh, trying to make me reflect back to you what you are doing to, towards me. Or for, to, to react emotionally back. But I, do, I have I hinged myself to my, my understanding to my insight, to my inner leading, to my wisdom, to the light that I have, not to the things that I feel. Amazing. So, so he said, what reward is it for you? It is, this kind, it is not that kind of love that is based on instinct that is rewarded in heaven. The kind of love that we call love that is based on you behave well to me, I behave well to you, is not rewarded in heaven. Its, it's, it's reward is only limited to the earth. Its reward is only earthly. So, you know, the, that's why there is no marriage in heaven. That's why there will be no husband and wife in heaven. Because the things, the concept of husband and wife and love as we practice it on earth is only based on this kind of Reactions is only based on this kind of love. The love that is based on feelings. The love that is based on emotions. The love that is based on reflexes. The love that is based on stimulus. <laughs> Stimula. You know, so this kind of love is not going to last in heaven because heaven is only pure. Everything in heaven is only pure love. Everything is heaven is only absolute purity. Absolute purity, no manipulation, no magu magu there goes, no, 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 no kind of play goes, no kind of game goes over there. You know, it has to be everything, absolute purity, absolute, no perfection. That is what goes to heaven. That is why, you know, there is no husband and wife there. There is no kind of love. You are not going to deceive anybody and say, and do I to them and make them to reflect back to you. You don't need to do that in heaven. In every, all your motives and intentions are immediately visible. <laughs> so that's why I said, people who love, those who love them back, they are not rewarded by God. They are rewarded only on earth. That kind of work, love only works on earth. And... And, and he said, what reward have you? You, don't, you are not rewarded in heaven. You are only rewarded in heaven when you love purely from the earth without even expecting any response. When you love just out of principles, out of decision, out of understanding, not out of reflexes or emotions and feelings. So he said, so what reward have you if you do that? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? I mean, they are unbelievers. They don't even expect to go to heaven. And they are still doing the same. So it's, you know, it's things that don't have eternal consequences. They don't have eternal rewards. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? What have you done more than others if you only greet your brethren? Do not even the tax collectors do the same thing? 
But how, do, how we then expect to behave? How are we then expect to, expected to, to, to respond? What should be the right behavior? He said for in verse 45, that you, but you must be like the sons. You must be the sons of your father who is in heaven. So what does my father in heaven do? For he makes a son to rise on the evil. God doesn't need reflexes. God doesn't need stimulation. You don't need to stimulate God with your prayers for him to be good to you. <laughs> you don't need to stimulate God with your offering for him to be good to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to stimulate God with God. I go to church every Sunday. I go to church every Sunday for God to answer your prayers. No, no, no. You don't need to bribe God. <laughs> no, no. You don't need to bribe God. <laughs> you don't need to Say, God, but you see, uh, I fast once a week and I do this once a week and I, I go to church every Sunday and I, I never miss church and I give my tithe and offering. And so, will you, my miracle come now? Will you now send me my miracle? And, uh, no, it doesn't work with God. You remember two people who went to the, who went to the, who went to the temple and the other guy, the only one, the Christian. <laughs> he was just like one of us, yeah? He was just like you. He was just like you and I. And he went there, I said, God, you know, I pay my tithe, and I give, I fast once a week, and, I, and I'm not like that other guy. <laughs> He's a sinner. <laughs> and God said, <laughs> it is the good guy that we think is the right church member, is the perfect church member that went without receiving anything from the Lord. You cannot manipulate God. And unfortunately, I hear these days that so many churches are saying that you know, you must do this, you must do this, you must do this, you must go for evangelism, you must go to uh, do this, you must go pick, give your tithe, you must give your offering. You <laughs> because it's tied to your miracles. Your miracles are tied to what you do. Or your miracle is tied to your offering or to your tithe or to your home group or to if you go up to church every Sunday or you don't come to church or miss church. Rubbish. 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 That's not Christianity. That's paganism. That is Phariseeism. That is Sadduceism. That is anything but not Christianity. God cannot be manipulated, manipulated by your works. You only need to love him. And when you love him, you don't love him because you want to get something from him. When you love him, it's not because you need something from him or you want to convince him to do something for you. When you love him, you are not doing everything you are doing calculated. You are not calculating your actions that is going to lead you to some profit or to some reward. That is evil generation. Look for those signs. It is, it is the evil generation. We are the evil generations. Only evil people do that. Your intent is evil because it's all about you. Oh God have mercy. And if you go to a church where people tell you that, that God's miracle upon you, God's goodness to you, or God's visitation to you, or your answer prayer will be dependent only on what you do, on your works, run away from those kind of churches. Run away from that church. Because the Bible says, oh, you foolish Galatians. Oh, you foolish Galatians. Don't become a foolish Galatian. Don't let anybody fool you. He said you started in the spirit. Who had now brought you? How come you are now becoming finishing in the flesh? Don't let somebody fool you. Don't let religious people fool you. Don't let church fool you. Don't let, you know, people manipulate you. Just love on God. Your love for God should be because of your love and personal relationship with him. Not because you are doing this. In fact, you know, you know the righteousness of man would never produce, you know, I mean, I mean the works and, you know, wrong, uh, anger or whatever you do of man can never produce righteousness in the eyes of God. You know, it is just your love, the only thing you really need, to love God. You know, not you shouldn't tie your love to God with, you know, your, your egocentric, egocentric desires. And if big pastors and leaders are trying to, help, you know, put you in that, in that place, that, you know, whatever you are doing is connected to whatever you're going to receive to God, they are thinking God is like them. They are trying to make God be like human. God is not human. God is not man. God is totally, absolutely perfect. And you see what God does? And this is what the Father wants us to do also. He said, no, no, no. God 
sends, makes his son to rise on both the evil and the good. It's not about actions anymore. It's about you where your heart is. God loves everybody and he will show his love anyway. If you love him, it's not about either he's going to give you that or to give you that or you want to try to be good or not. And sends his reign on the just and on the unjust. So that's how God is. Just love on him. And it's not about you because you want to receive something or you don't want to receive something. You know, just love on God. That is what true love is. Love that cannot be manipulated. Love that is not human. Love that is not based on emotions or on feelings. Love that is not based on you know, stimulus or, or on, you know, on uh, reflexes or on, on, or, uh, yeah, on instincts. Love that is pure. That is just based on relationship. That's all. That's the kind of love that God wants. And that's why God, Jesus was trying to tell us, don't let your love, your acts of love be based on instinct or on reflexes or on stimulus. That's why he said, you have heard that you should love your neighbor. I mean, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Because that is, you love him because he loves you. So you love, if you love people who love you, that is not the love that Jesus brought. That's not God's love. That is just, you are just being human. You are just being ordinary. You are just, live. that is animalistic love. That is animal level of love when you are stimulated. You love me and I love you back. But then he said, hate the, you, your enemy. So you are my enemy, you hate me and I hate you back. So if you hate me back, that is animal. That is animal level. That is not God love. So God level of love and God understanding of love is I, you hate me, that you still cannot make me to hate you. Even though you hate me, I will still love you anyway. Why? I'm loving you not because of what you are doing to me. You are hurting me or you are not hurting me. You, I'm loving you not because of your action. I'm loving you because you are made in God's image. I'm loving you because you are in the likeness of God. I'm loving you because you are human. I'm loving you because God is in you. I'm loving the God in you. I'm loving you because I carry the nature of God. I have God in me. I'm loving you because I'm obeying my father in heaven. I'm obeying his, his instruction to love my enemy anyway. I'm loving you because of what I know and what I understand. Not because of what you do towards me. So he said, you, you have heard. He said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Why? Because of understanding that you have. Love is the nature of God. God is love. You cannot say you know me without loving your neighbor or your enemy. If you know me, you will be like me. And if you are like me, you will love everybody. So if you love your, you know, me, you will love everybody because I, everybody is in my image. So that's why it, what Jesus is trying to say is that your love must not be based on reflexes. Your love must not be based on stimulus. The stimulation could be different ones. Evil stimulation, negative stimulation, bad stimulation, or evil stimulation towards you. Ag ag actions could be different ones towards you. Aggressive action, bad action, you know, poor, you know, you know, attitude towards you. And attitudes could be different towards you. But it doesn't matter what attitude. The Bible says that own no man anything except most your love. So, your own thing is just to love anyway. Your own thing is just to love anyway. Just keep on loving. It doesn't matter what the person does against you or towards you. So, he said, bless those who curse you. Why? Because you are coming from the place of God's son. You are coming from the place of God's love. You are coming from the place of God's attitude. You are coming from the place of behaving like God himself. A child of God. You are a child of God. So, you are a child of God. You behave like your father. And your father will love those people who, who, who hate him. Or he will bless those people who curse him. He will do good to those people who hate him. And he will pray for those people who, who, who despisefully and persecute him and use him. And that's why I say, if you want to be sons of your father, if you want to be sons of your father in heaven, be like that as well. Because your father will even send son and rain to the good and the bad and the evil and the righteous. That's what it means to be Christians. So, for Christians, our love must not be based on feelings and emotions. Our love must not be based on stimulation and reflexes. Our love must be based on God's instructions, on God's understanding, on God's 
knowledge, on the things that we know about God, on, 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 on our relationship with God, on the fact that we want to please God, we want to obey God, we want to, you know, be like our Father in heaven. Our love is based on understanding. Why? Because we are homo sapiens. And what does homo sapiens mean? Human, man that is, uh, that thinking man, the thinking man, uh, you know, understanding man. Homo sapiens is man that uses his mind. So you are, we are people that act not based on our reflexes. We are people that act based on our decisions. We are people that act not based on our emotions, but we are people that act based on our understanding. We are homo sapiens. We are not people that act based on the, on the reflexes that we get from outside or on the stimulus that we get from outside. No, we are people that act based on the inner convictions that we have, based on the position that we have taken, based on the decision that we have made in our mind. We are people that act on the basis of decisions, on the basis of principles, on the basis of truth, not on the basis of what people do to us or don't do to us. That is what makes us human. But the men and humans that are acting only on the basis of reflexes and emotions, they are not humans yet. They have not grown to the level of human. They are animalistic humans. They are they are animals, animal level of people. You know, and that's why that's the difference between people. People who live their lives on the animal level or and people who live their life on the superior level, on the understanding level. And that's why we must leave the animal level of living and come to the higher level of acting from understanding, acting from decision, acting from superior place, from the superior place of understanding, light, uh, conviction, and, 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 uh, and truth, principles and truth, principles and truth. That is what makes us human. We are homo sapiens, people who act out of understanding, people who act out of what they know, what they are convinced of, not who act according to what they feel or what is done to them. That's what Jesus is trying to say here, that love your enemies. It's not because your enemy is doing, treating you well. It's because he, you are superior. You know something better. You are coming from a higher person, a higher level. You are a regenerated man. You are a man that is regenerated, moving and acting according to the inspiration of the spirit, according to what is happening from inside, from inside conviction, not from uh, outside provocation. Well, I have so many more to tell you, so many more things to tell you tonight. But what is the, what is the time, by the way? All right, my time is over. My time is over. Well, let me see what people are writing. Let me see what people are writing, how they are getting this topic. I hope they're getting it. I hope they're getting it, but let me see what they're getting. Uh, and I see the comments here. Okay, here we go. If you have not yet shared this link, I think it is a link that all of us must share. I think this is a link that everybody must share. You must go and, you know, listen to this message over and over again. I think this is a message that everybody must hear over and over again. And write something on it as you are giving it out, as you are going to share it. You are going to share it. Make sure you write some comments as you are going to share it. <laughs> Please make sure you uh, write some comments as you are going to share this this message. Okay, Ola Jumoke and Olua says, my love must be based on the things I know about God and that I want to please him because I love him. Yes. If your machine do said, wow, powerful message. Anastasia McDonald said, wow, wow, wow. Gift blessing say, why loving? Remember my beloved. People must give you a nickname. Please, please don't mind them. Keep doing what you are doing. Amen. Unkiru Ojima do say, you are the man, Noel. Divorce is sure not an option. The earlier we get it, the earlier we start working on our marriages. Uh, Gift says, uh, wow. Anastasia says, pastor has taken us to another spiritual spec savers. <laughs> Lilia and Vivian Taylor says, love is more powerful than hate. You definitely. Uh, Unkiru says, everybody should share everywhere. Oyinye said, wow, wow, this is beautiful. Oluwafumilayo says, 
awesome. Love always as a bona fide child of God. Gift blessings say this is mind blowing message. Ro Rochelle White, this has brought so much light to so much understanding. I love the truth. Uh, for me, only Father said, Amen and Amen. Joseph says, Hard to hear this message in churches today. Even so called preachers never have such kind of understanding of God's love. Eric Osadolo said, Thank you, sir, for this deep revelation about God's kind of love, respect, and more grace. Nelson says, Love is the greatest gift, says Paul. Uh, Solange Ngwashi says, what a great message. I'm so blessed. Thanks very much, sir. Lyad uh, says, thanks. I love you. Ogbe Nelson, love your neighbor as, yours, as I have loved you. If we have a reason to love, then our motive breaks, betrays us. Our love must be unconditional. Ojo, Ojo Pelumi said, this is the message for the 21st century. <laughs> T.Y. Moore says, wow, so enlightening, especially the examples you gave. We are indeed called to a higher kind of love. You rock, Dr. Adelaja. Comfy here says, thanks again, Pastor Sunday. Love you. Blessings. Marianne, Marianne says, remember this warning from the Lord. In the last days, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. Toshuku says, I now know how to truly love. Thank you, Pastor. Moli say, more to learn, sir. Yes, I'll be back tonight. I'll be back tonight at 7, 7 p.m. Nigerian time and 7 p.m. British time and 2 p.m. Eastern time in America. And of course, uh, that will be 8 p.m. European time. Anastasia said, Pastor, you are en enmeshing my heart to the Father's heart. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Bolujide said, I must choose to be led by love. Right. Onyinye said, this is the gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. You are just the best. Thank you. Nkiro Jimadu said, even if our spouse becomes an enemy, we are still commanded to love them. Right. right. Now you are getting it. You got the message. Ibrahim says, this is really good. Thanks for passing this message, sir. Oshuko say, thanks, Pastor. God bless you, sir. Nano Nadebayo, I can see, according to statistics, why the rate of divorce is higher in the body of Christ than the unbelievers. Ogwe Nelson said, to love may be hard, but even harder and destructive is hatred. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Modupe says, uh, God bless you, sir, for this message. Sister Kate, I was telling the Lord I need more understanding on this kind of love to be able to work with people around me and lead them to the Lord. Alabi says, God bless you for this message. It is wonderful. Nkei Ruka say, wow, pastor, this is powerful. A powerful message. I'm really blessed. Thank you, sir. Blessings. Mary Thank you, Pastor. What an awesome revealing message. I am truly blessed this morning. God bless you and your family. Can't wait for the second part. Mary Mugure says, Are there people who are born with this kind of love? Because we always think my dad was a fool. He treats his enemies better than friends. We thought he was a fool. <laughs> Nobody is born with this kind of love. Actually, all of us are born with this kind of love, but we lose it as we grow up. So we need to go back to our original self. Nkiro Jimadu said, please keep voting for Best International Gospel Act, Darlene Madu. Okay. That's an announcement. Bia in style says, love is the greatest of all. Thanks, Pastor. Fumi Jeboda said, God's kind of love is all we must emulate. Thanks, sir for healing it down this way, uh, not the way you will hear from the pulpit. Oluwashe, he said, thank you, Pastor. I have a better understanding of love now. 
Jean Jean says, thanks for the message, sir. God bless you. Noel Okushuku said, three things I practice consciously in my marriage. I know I am handsome, thanks to God. That, that, that's why anywhere I go to present seminar, I announce my status as a married man, even before I talk as a child. As a child of, of God. Chi Sandra says, Pastor, this is a profound teaching. I have so many ugly experiences with people, but I choose to love them from a distance. This message is filled with great revelation and knowledge. Thank you for mentoring me, sir. Love you, sir. Uh, I can't read this. Maybe it's Japanese or, or Chinese. Thank you, Pastor. This message gives me peace in me and clearance. I almost burst into tears. We need to love our enemies because they are humans like us. We have to look beyond the hurts they did for us and love and love them like Jesus. Jerry Otashi is a pastor. I experienced the hate from my pastor and I left. But I can see a lot light thrown into my situation. God bless you, Pastor. Bash Ojelabi says, thanks for the message, sir. Ajaya Maka says, thank you, sir, for this message. You are a blessing for sinking soul. Christina says, uh, this teaching is appropriate for anyone, but especially for singles, for them to understand the two kinds of love. Love you, Pastor. This powerful teaching. Ola Martin, love is of God. We should demonstrate his love to all, even when we feel betrayed. Thank you, sir. Love you, loads. Ogwe Nelson, love is the answer this world is looking for, and we are the solution. Steve Osarity, we must learn to love unconditionally like our father. Thank you, Pastor. Gift blessing say this what we are talk this is what we are talking about. As Dr. Sunday are feeding with, is feeding us with raw food, I can feel the presence of God is moving all over my house. God is love. Thanks, my pastor. I have decided to love instead of hate. Pearl David, thanks. Thank you, sir. God bless. Tena, what a great and enlightening message. I'm blessed. Thank you very much, Dr. Adelaja. Linda Mukanda, love is a choice and not a feeling. Noel, this kind of message strengthens your marriage just like mine. Thank you, sir. We need this kind of message in this creative world. Ekun Sami Thompson, Pastor, I know where to love all, but I strangely find it more difficult to love Christians because... I expect them to know more. I need more grace. <laughs> Shashal says, you are a wise man, Pastor. Your choice of topic today and your silence about another topic about where women belong proves your wisdom. <laughs> Learning from you. <laughs> Paul David, this goes into archive. Multiple washes. Loading. <laughs> Gift says, please, Dr. Sunday, the mentorship class is coming with Span Spanish. Please, is it any more for English? Thanks, my mentor. God bless. Okay. I don't know that. I'm, I don't, I'm not aware of that. Can you send me that? Please send me what you are talking about. Gift blessing. If you got something in Spanish or in Russian, send it to me, please, to pastor at godembassy.org. Pastor at GodEmbassy.org. Send it to me so that I see what you are talking about. Elder Bafu, God bless you, sir. Serious anointing. Moli, we need to like a child. To, we need to like a child. Love unconditionally. Noel said, Pastor, I love. I will make a portrait of yours and hang it on my wall as a mark of honoring you. Thank you. <laughs> Tayo Stevens says, how do you undo those hurting you and still love them? Do you withdraw from them or endure their hurt? No, the fact that you love them doesn't mean that you should endure their hurt. 
if it's not pleasant to you, you can withdraw from them and but still love them in your heart. But that doesn't mean you should stand there and just endure it. No, no. You can leave the relationship, leave the uh, hurt or abusive situation, but you, that but in your heart you must still love them. Ben Fallow Dun said, Thank you for your good works. Deacon Morris, thank you, sir, for this great inspiration for waking up my spirit to acknowledge that fact that through love we can be servants of one another. Flair Karin, thank you, Pastor. I have to exercise myself today. Love you for real. Hola, BC. Sir, I salute you. No time spent with you is lost. I add to my knowledge every day. Love, 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 because it is the law of God. Evangelist Muji, thanks, Pastor, for this powerful teaching. It will be a blessing to many. Christianity is about love. God bless you, sir. T.Y., wisdom flowing from your heart, sir. Awesome. Anastasia, so, Pastor, you believe in love them, but leave them. Right, right. Okay. Here we are, that, uh, <laughs> dears. And, um... Yeah, I think our time is long, long uh, gone. And um, uh, poor David, when you leave the abusive situation, people still consider it unloving. How do you reconcile the fact that you love them but wouldn't donate yourself to their ways, especially as a Christian? No, the fact that if somebody is abusing you, it, it, you have to leave that place. If you are not leaving that place, that is... Uh, you are being wicked to yourself, and that is lack of love, and it's going to be lack of love to yourself as well. So, but what we are talking about is that even though you leave that place and you leave that relationship, but you still release the person and treat the person with love in your heart. You know, you still love the person in your heart, but love doesn't mean to build relationship with them anymore, and love does not mean to st still endure the abusive the relationship. You can put a gap between yourself and them but still love them. What, is, what matters is what is happening in your heart towards them. You don't have any hatred towards them. You don't have any, mm, you know, any anger towards them. And if they need your help, you are ready to help them. But you must pull the gap. All of this is says, please, Pastor, did not ask us to... Uh, please, Pastor, did not ask us to fake love. If you still find it difficult to love those that hate you, pray and God will help you. Do not fake it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope... Uh, yeah, Mkiru is saying staying on in an abusive relationship is an official suicide. Yeah, it's like killing yourself. It's an official suicide. So you don't stay in an abusive relationship. T.Y. says, wow, that is so spot on. Love them, but don't put a cobra around your neck. <laughs> That's well said. <laughs> Love them, but remove the snake. <laughs> yeah, so that is a different, uh, it's a different uh, thing. In love doesn't mean that you should endure abuse. So anyway, uh, I think you've done the copy of the message already. I hope you've, uh, uh, you've already shared the message. You've shared the, the message. And uh, I hope you've also written your comments and your, um, uh, yeah, your remarks on the, on the message so that people will know exactly what you got from it and what to expect from it. Uh, it will it will help them to be able to know how important this message is. So if you have shared the message, go ahead and leave a comment on it, on that message, uh, your own opinion, so that people will be able to pay attention to it and watch it. So it was nice uh, being with you people. Uh, and um, I hope you got something today. Why love turns to hate? Why love turns to hate? And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. 
Uh, tonight will be a continuation, and it's going to continue all week. It's going to continue all week. Uh, so, uh, see you tonight. God bless you guys. Bye.